best uh, state talk about entrepreneurship. And uh, in the next call, I will give a lecture about uh, freedom of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And now we have a great honor uh, of having uh, Mr. Davor Vujic from Croatia, who is a truly uh, leading force of promoting liberty ideas, libertarian ideas in uh, Croatia. You will see that they, these guys, without any institutions, without any organizations, are really doing some great, great, great stuff in Croatia. And they are truly mainstream. If you uh, compare like Serbia, Bosnia, and Croatia, over the moment, they, are, they don't have organizations, they don't have movements, but they have people promoting that, these ideas. And for me, they are promoting them great. So, that works for us all. Think tank, uh, and I want to name it after some 
you know, uh, crazy liberal. And then he thought for some uh, for a while and said, I, can't come, I couldn't come up with it. <laughs> any, any name that would symbolize the <coughs> liberals. I mean, there were people who, who had liberal ideas, but if you look for someone to uh, symbolize liberalism in Croatia, we, we, we couldn't come up with, with a name. Uh, in the 20th century, we have this move um, uh, towards socialism. The, 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 the major creation of pe peasant party was, was a part of the so Socialist Internationale, and it was uh, very much, uh, you know, although it was peasant, it was also socialist. This is, a, this is very typical for creation, you know, a combination of a uh, conservative Catholic uh, uh, sort of nationalist uh, uh, element with socialism. Socially leftist uh, uh, um, ideas. In the in the uh, 20th century, uh, Croatia was uh, uh, unfortunate to live through uh, two totalitarian regimes. Uh, we all know the Austrian regime, the, the fascist, uh, the Nazi regime in, in 1941-45, uh, and then the uh, the Tito's, uh, communist regime, uh, which was also a totalitarian. Of course, a lot of people in Croatia to this day will not agree to that, but uh, if, you, uh, if any one uh, of you uh, challenge, uh, challenges, wants to challenge me on this, I'll be happy to take, uh, to take up the argument. Um, so this, this, this legacy defines Croatian uh, politics to this day. There are two sides, the, uh, the nationalists, and the uh, communists or socialists, uh, and this, the, 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 uh, when we uh, when, uh, when we discuss things on Facebook and so on, we usually and we want to say the discussion has went the wrong way. Uh, we usually say, ah, it's all, it, it's again about Ustash and Partizan, which means that people take up ideological position, and you know there's no discussion about uh, anything else. Um, and this, this, this situation forms a, a, a creation paradox, what we call the creation paradox, that a lot of things in Croatia are blamed on neoliberalism, on, on neoliberal capitalism, and that we, as a matter of fact, have very little of it. Uh, so this, this is a paradox. For instance, uh, re uh, two, a couple of days ago, um, uh, a well-known um, lead uh, politician from, from a main opposition party, the right-wing uh, Croatian Democratic Party, Martina Dalic, left, uh, left the party and went uh, saying that they were not reformist enough. And the answer of the party establishment was the following. She was neoliberal and like, you know, we are not, we are really socialists. And we are talking about the right-wing party, the, the, the AGZ uh, that was, um, that, that, uh, was uh, running Croatia from independence in 1990 to 2000. Um, uh, this is a I, okay. I'll skip this one. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, this is a, a thing. This is a theme which would take us too too uh, much time to, to go deep into uh, whether nationalism is the last stage. Is it true, as Adam Mitnick said, that nationalism is the last the last stage of capitalism uh, of uh, communism? Uh, I mean, uh, probably not. Uh, not uh, we do not need to go into this. Uh, but uh, the point I do want to make is, the, is this uh, Mediterranean syndrome. So this is typical for many Mediterranean countries. Um, and I, I spoke with Jan uh, 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 recently on, on Facebook. I, I visited Istanbul for the first time a couple of months ago and had a political discussion with them. And then I realized that the situation they had there uh, is very similar to many kind of, uh, that they have the same syndrome that is described here. You have a right-wing government this is, that is pretty authoritarian and linked with uh, uh, prone, let, let's say, big, big, big capital in, interest uh, in, a, in a kind of corporatism structure, you know, uh, crony capitalism and so on. And then you have a, and then you have a, 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 a opposition to that position is democratic and leftist and anti-capitalist, uh, and anti-capitalist. So this is the this this is the thing I want you to remember when we when we uh, speak later. The democratic opposition to authoritarian government is anti-capitalist, and that's that that's uh, why we have also all uh, 
a lot of problems in, uh, I, I think it's, uh, it's the probably the case with all the former uh, Yugoslav uh, uh, countries. There's the fairly, you know, uh, uh, safe to say that it's uh, something that's not peculiar for, for Croatia. Um, well, then we have the dominance of the of the left wing intellectual elites, the fall, you know, following the practice movement, and they control, control the academia, uh, the cultural elites, and a lot of uh, media. Um, and then uh, the uh, next element is that we have a bunch of really not very principled uh, liberal parties. We have nominal liberal parties, but which are not really liberal in the classical. Western European liberal sense. Uh, they call themselves, but they, uh, some of them uh, are more uh, free market than others, but they are not uh, free market in a, in a, in a sense um, uh, that it would cons constitute a, 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 a coherent position. Uh, they are uh, too often they are prepared to compromise on, on this position. And and the last thing is that a fairly weak entrepreneurial uh, basis. You cannot, I mean, some people would claim that you cannot have a, a, a really a strong liberal party or a liberal movement without, a, 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 without it being based in real interest, in this meaning uh, entrepreneurs, capitalists, and uh, Croatian entrepreneurs. There are a lot of them, there are some are big, some are small. But a lot of them are not pro-market. This is uh, fascinating to, to learn. But you speak to, to uh, regular entrepreneurs. Some are pro-market, but many are not. Uh, especially those who, who deal, uh, who depend, whose businesses depend a lot in dealings with states, uh, with state uh, with people who build, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, highways, for instance. They will never be. Uh, little, you know. uh, but then, that is just an example. But there is a lot of other. You want to ask? Sorry. Uh, I just want to be clear. Uh, you tell me if I'm not right. I understand that high sellers is some kind of left liberals, and and there's their kindness, there's some kind of populist liberals. Uh, no, in Croatia, uh, the terms usually mean quite the opposite of what mm -hmm. they stand for. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, uh, HSLS. Uh, ju uh, just last week joined the coalition with the right wing party, which HZ, and HNS has always been uh, very leftist, in socially leftist, but in, in social issues like, like gay marriage, uh, serial writings, uh, you know, human rights, minority rights, that kind of stuff. They are very left, uh, more, left more left than, than as the, Fed, the, the you know the social democrats. Uh, and uh, HSLS was traditionally more uh, cent uh, uh, right center. Right? Mm -hmm. Budisha was, in, for instance, was a was a Croatian nationalist. It was a de democrat, but not a nationalist. So, so it's a dem uh, so it's a uh, little bit to the right. HSLS is a little bit to the right, and HS HNS is a little bit to the, to the left. Well, a lot to the left. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> be very, very weak pro market element. So then they're, they're very liberal in in American sense. Uh, uh, very leftist in social issues and on, on market issues also very leftist, which is which is not the liberal party. So this is this is the, uh, uh, the the name of the game. Okay, so a brief history of Croatia. How am I doing with time? Uh, uh, okay, you have, you, I'm, I'm yeah, fine. Okay. Yeah. Is it interesting this? I mean, interesting. <laughs> yeah, because if it's not, I can you know be, go much faster. Um, okay, the, the topic of Croatian independence was three issues in one. It was independence from Yugoslavia, so independence versus life in uh, under Milosevic, I mean, in this, you know, uh, uh, Milosevic, I mean, multi ethnic, multi state uh, Yugoslavia. The, uh, another topic was democracy, liberal democracy, Western type liberal democracy versus one party system. And the third was uh, capitalism or uh, free market was the socialism or central planning. And while, while the first two were pretty obvious, you know, uh, the, the third one is less obvious. And some people claim today, ah, we didn't want a vote for this, you know. There's, there are people in, on the left in Croatia who say, okay, we didn't vote for capitalism. I mean, you did, but uh, you forgot about it. So this was the system, that, that was the consensus at the time. This is important to say. 
you know, because people were tired of in the 80s, they were tired of of of, of, of um, the fact that I mean, the, the, some of the stuff that that uh, uh, Krasen, uh, uh, spoke about about going to the to, 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 to buy jeans and, and you know going to grass to buy rice and and, and flour and so on and so on and. Um, and many people did not understand what market economy means, but they certainly wanted a life uh, that, that people had in, in the West. In that sense, uh, in the 90s, uh, this was the there were two two major uh, phases. Let's say the 90s and the, and, and the new millennia. The 90s were uh, characterized in the world uh, in, globally. This was the uh, the golden era of neoliberalism, let's say, and it also overlapped with the transition of, of Eastern European countries in, in, into, um, into capitalism. Uh, in, in 2000, uh, you have, uh, and in Croatia, it was the rule of, of uh, you know, the first Croatian president, uh, Tuzman. After 2000, you have uh, the, the, what, what we call the Croatian de Tuzmanizacija, which means uh, all the things that went one way, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, the left center, left government uh, tried to uh, try to reverse and so on. So, and we have reversal of all the all the all the things that uh, were done, or many things that were done, liberal things that were done in the 90s were undone in, in the 90s. And I'll describe a little bit more. In addition, so first you had the changes in legislation, uh, abolishment of, of uh, common property, the state property, uh, privatization, uh, the new constitution, the laws <laughs> allowing uh, prior, uh, private ownership, uh, prior entrepreneurship, all, all, the, all this legislative uh, framework for, for a functioning uh, market economy, uh, market uh, freedoms, and then the, the very important thing was the stabilization plan, which stabilized the currency, although it, it is a monetarist, uh, you know, you can, you can look at it as a monetarist economic policy, but it, it was actually a political decision, because Tuchman wanted to say, okay, we left Yugoslavia, what was characteristic of Yugoslavia? Hyperinflation, you know, we will never ha have uh, hyperinflation again, and the Croatian kind of currency pegged to the Deutschmark will be as hard as Deutschmark, you know, convertible, and that, that was a political decision, and this is a decision, I mean, this is very important to, to know. It was not just an economic decision, it was a political. Uh, but it was, um, uh, it defined in a, in a very specific way uh, creation, uh, uh, transition, and, and economic circumstances that, that uh, led to. Uh, this is the, the stabilization plan, is to this day um, something that's been very, very often criticized, strongly criticized from the left, of course. The currency. All the all the things that don't work in Croatia are blamed on the fact that our currency is too strong, so we can't export and this and that. Uh, which is, you know, to my mind, is a wrong argument, but this is often made argument. Uh, the important thing was also privatization of the bank banking sector. Why I'm saying this because we did not have a financial crisis. When the United States had a financial crisis, the Greeks had, had a financial crisis, and. Uh, Many, many countries uh, uh, had banks and the verge of collapse, uh, Scotland, uh, uh, Ireland, this and that. Croatia had very, very stable banking sector. Why? Because it was uh, in foreign hands. Uh, and it was impossible for the local politicians to use local banks to credit their friends, uh, their own pet projects to do this. Uh, so uh, the Croatian banking system, in my mind, and my, uh, many liberals uh, survived, and it's, it is in better shape than Slovenian bank, except not <coughs> for that matter, than uh, it, precisely because it was privatized on time. And it was, this was uh, in all in this uh, era uh, when uh, during uh, um, two or three Croatian governments uh, that were um, uh, pretty liberal, you know, which were taking. Uh, uh, transition fa fast in the same sense that it was happening in Estonia uh, and, and other Eastern European countries, Poland, maybe not as fast, but you know, they started well. But they never uh, uh, carried out the second part of the privatization, 
the structural reforms that did not uh, prioritize, that did not liberalize state monopolies in you know, like electricity, uh, oil, uh, and, and so on. And this is this this thing on the right hand side. This is the root of all problems that, that we have today: in, inefficiency in the, in the public sector, uh, public debts, uh, uh, cronyism, nepotism, and and, and uh, Actually, the economy that is not really very, very, um, how did they say, um, very vibrant. Yeah. Uh, we have then the second government, which continued with the liberalization, the, uh, especially of the trade. Uh, we entered the WTO uh, and so on. But it was, oops, I'm sorry. Uh, but it was also uh, they uh, started with the large scale.